Good morning. Welcome, everybody, wherever you're at. Maybe it's not uh, morning. It's uh, afternoon where I'm at today. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to our weekly health lab. Uh, Alternative Health Concepts is the name of the company that I'm with, and uh, you can get to our website directly under my name right here. Uh, go to our website and check out our wonderful information that we have for you that will help yourself heal yourself. And uh, we believe that the body is the only uh, thing that, that can heal you, um, that you need your immune system to be working optimally. And uh, we, we put out information to help you get there. And that's one of our guests today that we're going to be talking to is is made a lifetime career of doing that, just that and helping our bodies heal themselves. Um, we also have a product on our site called BioPro Plus. Please look at it, um, find out about it, understand it. It's a supplement that is a bioidentical, bioactive supplement that you can take into your body. It's, it's the main protein that your body produces uh, from the thymus gland. And we've isolated those some proteins that are critical to the modulation of your immune system. So go check it out and uh, get your immune system back in health if you're fighting any type of disease or, or pathogen at all. Um, so with that said, today we've got a awesome, awesome uh, guest, and it was kind of it was kind of neat to me. Um, Dr. Frank Lucas is a little bit older than me. I think we're, we figured out about ten years older than me, but I felt like immediately in talking to him that probably within the first 20 minutes of talking to him the other day, uh, getting to know him, I felt like I had a kindred spirit. Um, you know, he, I realized that when I'm his age, 10 years from now, I want to be doing what he's doing. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of uh, following in his footsteps. I'm much more new to this game, but at the same time, uh, I'm excited to uh, learn from people like Dr. Lucas. Uh, Dr. Lucas is a PhD. He's a natural health consultant, and um, he just has a wonderful website. We'll get into that. We'll, he's written a couple books. Uh, we'll get into that. And uh, just he, a lot of honorariums. He's been doing this for over 25 years, helping people help themselves get healthy. That's kind of it in a nutshell, and we want to hit on a lot of different subjects. But before I go into it, I just want to hit on four things, and we'll hit each one. Um, and it's right off Hib's website, but what he does to help people. Number one, he accomplishes their health objectives naturally. Number two, he discovers, helps them discover root causes of declining and failing health. Number three, he learns how to sustain or rebuild their health. And, and every body is individual. And so he gets to that root cause and helps you understand what you need to do to get your body healthy. And escape the track of declining health or avoid it altogether. So those are four four subjects, uh, Dr. Lucas, that we want to touch on today, and we'll we'll get to all of them, I'm sure. But before we do that, I want to turn the time over to you, and I like to just give us your little two minute story, if you will, um, of what got you to where you're at today, and and why you're here. Talk talk about even in your younger days how you came about to be Dr. Lucas, natural health consultant. Well. In my younger days, I was an athlete, and uh, I have created several problems for myself. You know, most people can put their finger on the epiphanal moment when uh, their life changed. For me, they cut me out of a fence in Jacksonville, Florida. And when they cut me out, my, my foot was on backwards. My spikes had slid underneath the... Mm the fence when I was over to catch a foul ball. And when I bounced off of the fence, uh, my spikes didn't move, but my body pirouetted. So uh, mm. that changed my athletic career significantly. And uh, you know, when God closes a door, he always opens a window. And my life started there. I, I uh, went through corporate careers and all sorts of things. And when I finally got to my second career, which is what this is, um, I had some experience with uh, the, the symptoms of the injury that I've had. And uh, I became dissatisfied with, with, with the way I was being handled by traditional medicine. It was basically pain pills. 
and uh, started searching for uh, something else. And I ran into the first guy I ran into was an aloe vera guy. And he sent me his sample of cold press whole leaf aloe vera. Uh, and it, it <laughs> really helped. Um, from there, I met other people. And uh, when I left, uh, I was a victim of, not a victim, I was the benefactor of, of uh, a real organization and the company I worked for. So uh, when I had a chance to, uh, to move into my second career, that's where I got started. And uh, as everybody has, there's mentors in their life. And I went from being an interested client to becoming uh, involved in all sorts of this. I became a formulator uh, back when nutraceuticals in the 90s, nutraceutical was a brand, uh, brand new word. And uh, we were on the cusp of the development of nutraceutical supplements. Uh, one of the things that, that I did is I learned to be a nutraceutical formulator. Uh, Nupro is a, it was a, result of me drawing the short uh, straw so the, the, the fellow i was working for made uh, supplements for a lot of different people and he uh, became disenchanted with the fact that uh, they'd cut your throat for 50 cents and he said we need to, to create a place where people can actually buy professional grade supplements that are put together uh, synergistically so that they they do uh what they expect them to do without buying bottles of this and buying bottles of that not taking all the chances and we all thought that was a good idea and uh i ended up uh, becoming the figurehead for nupro which is uh, subsequently my supplement company um as nupro progressed um I became more and more consultative with my clients and there were professionals involved in that sort of business. And uh, so I became uh, conversant in uh, a lot of the, the problems that people have. And when I decided to, to convert Nupro into an e-commerce business, uh, we're a, a preferred vendor on uh, Amazon and we got our e-commerce site and that sort of business. I decided to open up my own practice in Castle Rock and I've got a following of, of people that are referred to me and people that are coming to me and yada, yada. yada. So I, uh, in my semi-retired stage, <laughs> I take oh, 15, maybe 20 new clients a month. And Okay. So let me, let me stop you there, Frank. So how many years did you do the formulating or are you still doing that? Oh, I still do a little of that. Okay. It's so, getting... So I'm not a big, I'm not overly enamored with, uh, with the direction uh, natural supplements are going. I think, I think there's too many natural things that are, that are becoming trademarked or copyrighted. So I'm more of an herbalist than anything else. So the, the it, a lot of the, the people I used to work for really look to these new, uh, these new uh, trademark products because um, they're more akin to the way the FDA uh, does stuff. But, uh, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm kind of old fashioned in that respect. So is, would that be similar to um, when you said akin to the F FDA, the way they work it, is that similar to the way big pharma works? They go in and they, they develop a drug, synthetic drug, and then they patent it. And that's that's what they push until that patent runs out, so to speak. Is, are you talking well, similar similar areas where people a, patent? Yeah, the, the problem is people think that uh, the natural supplements are not very highly regulated. Well, that's not true at all. They're very highly regulated. So you need mm -hmm. to document the things that you're doing and, and, and present it to the FDA. They'll either accept it or reject it and blah, blah, blah. So right, right. it's a lot easier when someone has uh, gotten to patent on the thing, the FDA kind of assigns credibility to the patent office that isn't necessarily all. <laughs> okay, so you, so you were in there, you were developing uh, products, you didn't, 
get disillusioned, but maybe a little bit. Maybe that had something to do with it. It, it probably gets frustrating um, making products for I got more people. excited. Tell you the truth, I got more excited about the Radiant Health Club. Yep. I mean, that's where it's fine to, to build supplements, but it's way better when you're hands on with when you're hands on with people that have a problem that no one seems to be able to resolve and you're able to to help give them their life back. That's very rewarding. Okay, so that that brings us to current day to what you're doing now. You said you're semi retired, but it sounds like you're coming out of that if you're getting the, that many customers or, or patients coming through a, on a monthly basis now. So one of the first things that you do, yeah, according to your website, you help accomplish their health objectives naturally. Talk to us a little bit about that. What, what does that mean in a, in a nutshell? Well, everybody that, that comes to me has an objective and, and they'll fall into, into one of, or two, uh, one or the other categories. They either want to stay healthy or they want to become healthy. And uh, that's generally their objective. It, and, and if they want to become healthy, they're going to have a litany of symptoms that's slowly but surely stealing their life away from them. And um, so what you've got to do is have have a client describe to you what their objective is. So it's measurable. Otherwise, you, you have nothing to measure. Yeah. So so I guess if I came to you and I said, hey, doc, you know, I'm, I'm getting up there in age. I'm almost 60 years old. Uh, you know, I've got the achy joints. Um, I get tired easy, this and that. So I don't know what to do. I, I take these drugs that the doctors give me for, for high blood pressure. You know, the whole thing. Typical American middle-aged man, I guess, um, in my case. At that point, I don't even know what my health objectives are. I just want to feel better. So That's I would assume I assume you would help guide me into what is better and what is available to actually out there for me naturally. But, but there's this feeling better. Those, those are all nebulous things. And yeah, uh, true. So what you need to do is focus those nebulous things down. So there's something that that you can actually deal with. Um, a 60 year old man, I guarantee you at 60, you ought to be concerned about your prostate. You ought to be concerned about andropause. You ought to be concerned about uh Oh, three or four other things that are involved there. Uh, and the, the primary measurement that I look at is uh, going to make sure that I really got to understand the internal terrain of the body. And the only way you can do that is to focus on three things. You, you focus on the biochemical mass that's coming into the body. You focus on the physical things that you're asking the body to do. And you focus on the emotional uh, things that are part and parcel of your body. Because all of those are going to create a snapshot of, of the conditions that your body is trying to flourish in. You create the ecosystem of your body. It's my job to figure out where you're breaking down that ecosystem. I use a technique called lifestyle mapping. And if I happen to have a real troublesome client, I'll have them uh, basically keep a seven day journal of what they do, uh, mm. what they consume, how they feel, their sleep habits, yada, yada, yada. And from there, I get a statistical uh, example of, of these, those three components that make up their, uh, their 24 hour a day event. Okay, so let, let's talk about each one of those. Number one, biochemical mess coming into your body. I'm assuming that's everything we're eating, drinking, breathing, breathing. anything that we're taking into our body. Um, yeah. Okay, so how and can that's we? That's the biomass. That that's the biomass from which your body has to work. So in that biomass, the body has some basic fundamental requirements, and that biomass has got to contribute to it. And then in that biomass is going to come along with the, the normal contaminants that the body manufactures is going to come another bunch of contaminants that may or may not be overwhelming the, these biochemical reactions that go on in the body. Gotcha. So I would assume since uh, <laughs> you mentioned that first, but 
that is probably in more control. Well, probably not more control than the physical, but what we put in our, our mouth is really something that's pretty easily controlled, I would think. We can make no. changes there. Maybe not. Probably, no? the hardest, probably the hardest thing to do okay. because that's how life gets in the way of living. Uh, uh, you, you consider, <laughs> that's my very favorite paper is how life gets in the way of living. And, and so what you have is, is this, this milieu of activity that goes on um, and priorities within that, within that, that whole uh, picture that will be also contributing. And that's part of the physical part of it. And it's, there's not one that's any more important than the other because they, they end up creating the calculus that ends up creating uh, a condition of health and healing or a condition of declining and failing health. Okay. Okay. So and it's really simple. Don't make it harder than it is. It's simple. So what, okay. So if it's simple, let's, let's assume it's simple. And let's say I've got hypothetically, um, well, it's not hypothetical. I, I'm an older guy. I'm, I'm getting up there. I've got uh, high blood pressure. I've got achy joints. I don't, I haven't been diagnosed if it's arthritis or what it is, but it's those kind of things. For the most part, I eat a pretty healthy diet. So where do I start? Or where do you start with a guy like me? You walk in the door, we talk for five minutes, and I'd shove a pH strip on your tongue. Okay. And I, and I would know what, uh, from that pH strip, I would have a pretty good indication through a saliva test of, of the nature of the internal terrain of your body. And uh, it, if you're acidic, that's going to be contributing to inflammatory responses. That may, in fact, be uh, contributing to your achy joints. The other piece I'd like to know is what you consider reasonable exercise. And um, if you're overtaxing um, your body, that's going to also be a contributor to the inflammatory condition that you're describing. And so, like, so like most of us, particularly my age, we, we still think we're in our 20s, even though we're in our 50s. And so we, we get back on the health kick. And the next thing you know, we're trying to run a marathon in two or three weeks. We're, sure, put, we're pushing way too hard. Yeah. Okay. I, my very favorite study, and we talked about this yesterday. It, it, I don't know if you threw it up or not, but my favorite study is, uh, I, I think the guy's name is Chorowski. Uh, you might have it. I can't remember. I, yeah, I, do, I, I do have it. Go ahead. But, he, his study was called uh, Stone Age Genetics and Space Age Lifestyle. And what he, what he did was his basic hypothesis is that our, our genetic uh, code was established uh, basically in Paleolithic times. So we, when we were hominids is when the genetic code that makes us people was established and from that code that's what the body expects to survive and flourish if you're if you're askance of that then the body is in a in a stress condition and it's going to manifest um in all sorts of things whether it's mental physical or or health wise and create it he's his position is that uh, we were hunter gatherers and there was um, uh, it's kind of sexist but the gatherers were the women and the hunters were the men and based on uh, on uh, your sex you are inclined to those kinds of activities and he suggests that hunters hunted uh about every four days and so the body looked for those kinds of of activities um, and compartmentalizing and and eating a regular diet women went out and gathered uh every two to three days and the body is counting on those kinds of activities if your gender happens to be female if you get yourself involved in this bizarre stuff his, his position is that you're outside of what the body expects to happen, and that creates a stress condition, and the body responds in a stressful way, which is to put you into fight, or, fight and flight, 
and it shuts down the HPA axis that communicates uh, the various adjustments to the various systems and functions of the body. Interesting. Interesting. I put it up there. So I, I don't know if that's exactly, that's the art, one of the articles that you sent me. I, so people can, should be able to click on that and go to it. Good. I'll, I'll leave that up for a while, but um, yeah. So it, it isn't hard, I guess is the bottom line. And I think we get so confused, particularly if we're diagnosed with something. Let's, let's say we get, like most of us know, we, we have somebody or, or ourselves are diagnosed with something terrible like cancer. It isn't that difficult to make the changes necessary to help your body heal yourself. Isn't that your That's not experience? True. That's not true. Okay. That, that's probably the most, the, the scariest thing you'll ever hear in your life is you got cancer or you got prostate uh, high or you got, it doesn't matter when you hear a diagnosis of anything. First of all, it's fear. Then there's this, this quote commitment to fighting the battle. And then there's a disappointment when it doesn't turn out like you anticipated. It, it's always the same. It doesn't matter whether it's cancer, whether it's uh, uh, indigestion, whether it's a heart condition, whether it's pulmonary, whether it's joint. It doesn't matter. Every one of those things are going to change the way your life is. And that's going to create fear. And from fear... Now you're building up another stressor and you can you basically compound the, the situation that needs to exist for the body to heal. I, I, I tell people, uh, my second favorite uh, article I've ever written is called two C's and three D's. And two C's stand for choices have consequences. And the three D's stands for if you want to change the way things are, you got to change the things you do. And it mm -hmm. takes decisiveness, determination and discipline. I like and that. If you have those three things or th those five things, then you're not in a state of fear. You're not in a in a, a state of fighting. You're in, in a state of doing. And when you're doing, it doesn't it's not a war. It's nothing. It's falling back in love with your body. And if you can do that uh, and you haven't you haven't gone too far down the path of 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 chronic uh chronic disorder then you've got a chance to change the way things are and, and there's a point of no return now make no well, of course of course of course there is but um at the same time is it would it be safe to say then that that fear is is something that that is normal that we'd obviously norm, normally have but but can't we take that too far in other words if it is something that we're diagnosed with that is a bad chronic disease, and they're all bad, they're all, but, but something that's life threatening, isn't there something that we can do about it ourselves? Or, Absolutely. Yeah. It's fall back in love with your body. It gets back to the basics. I mean, exactly. the body does not have a, a requirement for condiments, it doesn't have a requirement for candy and crap like that. It doesn't have a a, a requirement for convenience foods and fast foods. It has a requirement for food. It has a requirement for relaxation and stress reduction. It has. It doesn't have a requirement for multitasking. As a matter of fact, it goes askance of the genetic code. It doesn't have a requirement for these excessive uh, expectations of vacation and and recreation and those none of that it's it's learning to live in bliss and bliss is and you laughed at me when i told you this but bliss is learning to enjoy the mediocrity of life it isn't the extremes and it isn't of either deal it's not the exhilaration of all this extreme crap and it's not fear and all of the regrets and all of the things that come along with that it's knowing that if there are two conditions of a choice, it's either expected or unexpected. And so if you get an unexpected uh, outcome from a choice you make, good. 
That means you've learned something. Next time, do it differently. Well, if you've got cancer, the last thing you need to do is when you get out of the hospital from a treatment, go eat chocolate cake. How many people reward their... I digress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but that's a real deal. That's a real thing. Sure. I've had, I, I, I had a friend of mine say that. I, if I had... um, let's take her, let's take her our favorite dessert. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. So what you need to do is take her a half a dozen of fresh vegetables and show her how to create a vegetable melee. 70% of it is green so the body can detox and 30% of it's colored so it can protect itself from the stuff that's going on. I mean, it's insane. And But I guess that's what I meant when I said it, it really isn't that hard. It, yeah, it, 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 it's not easy, but it's it's a mindset. You gotta you gotta change that mindset. You've gotta understand that the what we've been led to believe is normal, the standard American diet, the sad diet, <laughs> is not normal. It's that is not normal. It's not what our bodies need. In fact, it's contributory to chronic disease. Um, and and we need to understand, learn what those steps are to do and, and put those and implement them and Love change our life. lives. It's really, it's one step. It's love your body. It, I, I got to tell you, there is no love affair that can ever be created in the body if your diet consists of condiments, connections, and MREs. And yeah. that's the standard American diet. And I hear excuses all the time why people can't do that. And the truth of the matter is they do it because they've let life get in the way of living. They're either busy regretting and fearing what's going to be in the future or being disappointed because what's in the future never is. And they always miss the important moment. And that is to love your body. But you mentioned this fear business. Uh, some of my clients that have had uh, some pretty serious chronic diseases, the hardest thing for them to do is to convince um, their family and their helpmates that they're doing the right thing because of this, the conditioning and whatever advertising that you hear has created all sorts of, of little movies that, that go off in your mind when something happens that overwhelms common sense. So if, I mean, if I say cuckoo for, cuckoo for what, what do you know? That's cuckoo for cocoa puffs. Well, right, what's right. the tiger, right? Yeah, I, yeah. Think of all the conditioning that you've gone through and what? How long have you been watching the TV and listening to the radio? Yes, for a long time. 50 years plus. So there's where all those movies are. Yeah. So when you get sick, what's the first thing you're conditioned to do? Take an Advil or take something, you know, that get the fever down, whatever it might be. And when it doesn't work, then what do you do? Go to the doctor. <laughs> and then what do you do? Go to the pharmacy. <laughs> exactly. And then, exactly. What do you do? Go to and, a and then go home and go to bed and then go to a specialist. Yeah, it's just on and on and on. But never treating the underlying problem. Or, or loving your body. Yeah, I like that. I have to argue with people uh, about when when their body is done and 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 what they need to do to convalesce. People don't understand. The body needs a chance to recover from a treatment, for goodness sakes. You know, when the treatment's done, that's when recovery happens. And when recovery happens after that, then you still have convalescence to deal with. So you got rehab, you got this, you got that, you got this, and nobody ever thinks they convalesce. They're always wanting to know when they can eat like they used to, when they can go back to work, or when they can go see their family, or when it, whenever they can start resuming the things that they did that were outside of mediocrity, that was the contributing factor to where they are. They're their own worst enemies, a lot of it. We're, we're kind of all addicts, aren't we? We just, we get addicted <laughs> to certain lifestyles, <laughs> and we just want to do it. That's what it seems like to me. No, everybody's propagandized. I, uh, you are. That, that's a better point, yeah. Madison Avenue has programmed a response in your head, and you dutifully do it. You are nothing more than a, a drone uh, for advertising. It's hard. That's one of the reasons I'm, I am, boy, I'm reading a term called lifestyle medicine, 
and I just love it. That I've practiced lifestyle medicine for 20 years. What is, hold on real, real quick, for, for those of, that don't know, what is lifestyle medicine in a little nutshell? Lifestyle is medicine is loving your body. It's, it's using uh, diet and uh, lifestyle modifications to, to set the stage for treatments. And it's even starting to be embraced by some MDs, some, some traditional medicine people, because they recognize that most what they have, and medicine honestly is wonderful. It, medicine has is the the value of emergency medicine, and the things that have happened in the in the way they control bacterial infection to those things have been absolutely monumental things. Um, but when they get to when they get to to uh, managing chronic disorders, the physician always tells one of those people, well, you need to do something with diet. Well, the physician is lucky if he's got 15 minutes to talk to that person. Mm -hmm. And they're not really trained on diet anyway. So somebody goes out and, and searches around it. Lifestyle medicine is building teams now where uh, people are, are, once the physician says, well, looks like you're pre-diabetic, uh, and we need to do some things with diet. And instead of kissing them goodbye, they say, let's make an appointment with me. Yeah. And he sends me a note and he says, this, we got pre-diabetic here. Uh, put your deal together. So my deal is going to be diet. My deal is going to be supporting pancreas. My deal is going to be supporting metabolism. I put a package together along with the diet, with, 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 uh, the uh, tactical prescription, I create a, a, a complementary uh, natural remedy in lifestyle modifications, and I can track it uh, and put schedules together that are non-threatening. What's threatening about me? I don't have a white coat, and I never <laughs> carry it. I just don't. So they get to come in or talk to me on the phone or Skype or whatever it is, and we follow this lifestyle uh, uh, this lifestyle approach I use. So they do their lifestyle mapping and uh, we get them, uh, we put them through a, a, oh, it's a, a kind of an exclusion diet. So we take away the sensitivities to different foods and additives and that. That's a two week deal. Two weeks, the immunoglobins have gone, their body's balanced up. And then they can start adding things back in that they want, but it all starts with a, a reasonable, uh, a reasonable diet. I'm a big fan of the University of Michigan. They, they have a food pyramid. It's called the Healthy Food Pyramid, and it's beautifully documented. And so, in their pyramid is what they perceive the balanced diet, and of course, it is what it is. But it's documented why you need this stuff. And it's a wonderful site. Nice. That's I can refer them there, so I don't look like an idiot. I, of course, I have some prejudices about stuff, but yeah, yeah. Uh, you know that's the way that goes. Well, if anybody that's is if, medicine, it's elegant. If anybody's li listening now that wants to sit in the seat and ask uh, Dr. Frank any questions, feel free to do that, um, or myself if you have any questions for us. But um, okay, so. Again, now that, how long does your process take? Let's say I'm that person with pre-diabetic that came to you, referred by my doctor. Now I'm sitting in your office. I get on your diet. I'm all charged up. I'm excited about changing my life and moving on and getting better. Uh, how long does that process take? I guess everybody's individual with that too, right? It takes a month for every year that you've been investing in your sickness. It, Interesting. There's a Great. study <laughs> I like question? that. Yeah, I like that. That's that's going to be a long time. I'm going to be a patient of yours. <laughs> but no, it, it it happens like reading the book book backwards. So the last chapter you wrote was the final insult. That's when your body quit sending suggestions and sent you a demand note. Nice. Up to that, it's been suggestions. So as we go through these processes, it's like turning uh, the chapters of that book you've written backwards. Uh, th there's a study called senescence. Uh, sen senescence is a study of aging. And I think 
I can't remember the guy's name. Just do, I think it's senescence.org or senescence.net. I think the guy's name was Paolo. But, but they did a research on how many times there's this term called apoptosis, A-P-O-P-T-O-S-I-S, program cell death. And so what that means is a cell is can only re, uh, rebuild itself, re, re, renew itself by replacement a fixed number of times. Um, in, in this senescence study, it was somewhere between 14 and 17 times. And, and they estimated that the body rebuilds itself every seven years. That's where they came up with the program or w w the suggestion that the body can live roughly 135 to 140 years is the number of these uh, apoptotic uh, events to the, the point where you can no longer regenerate a genetic uh, code. Uh, um, and after that, happened, after that age, after that age, you, you just you're done. The your body can't replace yeah. cells. So okay. You're done. Okay. And that, that's a good thing. Otherwise, yeah. you know, it would be like rabbits in uh, Australia. It would be a fairly. It's like that. Did you ever? Did you ever watch Star Trek? I've seen some of it. I didn't watch it. I wasn't a big Star yeah. Trek fan. They crashed into a planet, and when they got there, they heard this grinding on the side of the of the, of the shuttle that landed. When they looked out there, the, the planet was so full of people that they were shoulder to shoulder and mm. that crowded in. Well, that's what keeps, uh, I, I suppose, that's a bit part of the big plan to keep us from overpopulating the Earth. You know, maybe so. Who knows? Yeah. So, but, but back to your point of the 135, I mean, that is what our, if we're doing everything right and we don't come in, fall into an accident or fall into a real chronic disease that takes our life prematurely. That's what our bodies should be living to is what you're saying. Yeah, is that true? That, that's the possibility. Okay. The probability is we don't live in a, this pristine environment. Yeah. And they did that based on a, a study in a, in a, in a bubble in, in, a bubble in Arizona. Yeah. Yeah. So the fact is the world's kind of a dangerous place. Yeah. Uh, I mean, sure. one of the one of the big things that has increased uh, lifespan is the most dangerous substance on Earth up until about oh, I don't know seventy five years ago was water. The fact that we are able to deliver uh, clean water to a tap is absolutely miraculous. Waterborne diseases killed more people than any I think any war ever did. So. There are there are a lot of things that are taken away from this dangerous world. Fortunately, we don't have to fight saber tooth tigers and cage bears, and right. you know you're not running around machines that are going to eat your arm off or stab you. So, but it's nonetheless it's fairly dangerous. And sure. things that we do in there impact uh, at night. You understand at night apoptosis means that you're building millions of cells but you damage millions of cells. You, you're out in the sun or you overwork and instead of being able to live that cell existing for its whole period of time, it's either injured or uh, damaged. It either has to be repaired or replaced on top of these apoptotic cells. And with that finite number of cells, it virtually guarantees that nothing is going to die in synchrony like like they anticipate in the Synesis project. Okay, gotcha. That well, that makes total sense, actually. Okay, so we're let's switch gears just well, a little bit now. Scary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I like it. That's interesting. So let's we're going to switch gears just a little bit. Obviously, you and I talked about you know being in this industry of alternative health, so to speak. Um, not a lot of people um, are buying into it. It's a very small percentage of people. And I don't know if buying into it's the right word, but uh, exploring it because of the programming that's been done on all of us. Um, so you have helped that education process by writing a couple books. Maybe you can explain. Uh, I know you've got a new book coming out or yep. just out and you've got one that's out and, and been out and looks like a maybe even a bestseller. And you can get a copy or a free book on your website. So talk about the different books that you wrote, what they're for, what they're, they're for, and, and how they're going to help 
educate us and become healthy. My newest book is called How to Match Your uh, Health Span to Your Lifespan. And that I think that's a direct result of me getting older and <laughs> watching what's happening to my friends. And everybody thinks that they're going to die healthy and, yeah. and nobody does. So what happens is their health span drops off precipitously sooner than their lifespan. And uh, uh. What, what you really want to do is to carry that health span out closer and closer to your lifespan. So you spend less time in a warehouse. Yeah. I mean, Convalescent make, hospital. Yeah. Who wants Everybody thinks that the golden years, they're going to be driving around in a, uh, whatever they're flying around or driving around a motorhome doing whatever they do, enjoying life. And they all think that, uh, they're going to eat lunch, drop dead on the couch and see what's next. Well, that's not the way it happens. That, I mean, the, the, the very most expensive time of your life is that period of time uh, when you're spending more time reading old newspapers or old books in the doctor's office and the time you die. And what you want to do is minimize that. Keep, you know, keep your magazines current, keep busy, love your body so that that period of time where you are being managed, your, your declining health is being managed. When you have a chronic disease, your health is being managed. This chronic disease generally left unattended will result in a crash. And so in traditional medicine and in, in the programming that's going on, they manage that crash landing. And the idea is not only to manage that and control the symptoms, but change that trajectory that's been brought on by the choices you've made in your life. And you can in fact change that trajectory from downward to upward and the more upward you go, some things you'll never you'll never change. It, I can't replace a, a I can't with herbs grow a new gallbladder. So if you had your gallbladder taken out, buy enzymes because you need them. Otherwise, your digestion is going to go to pieces. And then what? Got it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> there that you go. Sense. That makes sense. Uh, but other than that, if we change that trajectory, the period of time that between when you move on to whatever's next and when your body is is not sick enough to die is reduced so what do you that what are your sense. what are some of the yeah that totally makes sense and that <laughs> i mean i mean when, if you could con get those if you can get those two planes converging right near the end i mean you're going to you're going to finish out a great life or um, not falling off 20 right. years before you die Prematurely, sure, absolutely. Well, absolutely. not even prematurely. You doubt me, you go to a nursing home and you see what it's like when your health span doesn't equal your lifespan. If yeah. that's what you dream of, keep doing what you're doing because that's what you're buying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love that because uh, that that says it all. It, Go to go to your neighborhood uh, convalescent hospital and find out if that's the way you want to be, and and it'll be a shock that you won't want. And so then, what do we do? So it's never too late, right? Love it's your body. It's, it's, never... it's simple, and okay. that's what that's what this book is about. Nice. Get a hold of how your body works. Throw away all those misconceptions that Madison Avenue is shoved in your head, and figure out how your body is really supposed to work, what it needs, how you treat it, and quit listening to the, uh, this is where I talk about Bugs Bunny and Warner Brothers. There's this great Bugs Bunny uh, cartoon that I saw when I was a little kid, and on his left shoulder was the devil telling Bugs Bunny what he needed to do to Elmer Fudd, and on, the, on his right shoulder was the angel telling him how to be good. Well, this is Madison Avenue. This is your conscience and your conscience knows what your body wants. It's just that this guy is talking louder than this guy. And this guy goes, okay. And <laughs> off you go. And pretty quick, you got to give this guy more voice than you give this guy.
That's exactly. all. So it really it's is not, that simple. But what what the trick is, and the the this newest book, the health span lifespan book, gives you that data. And by the way, real quick, anybody that's watching this or watching the replay on our website, if you look down to the right, you can see the links to the book. You can click on those links. It'll take you right there and you can uh, get that uh, great book. I haven't read it myself, but I plan on reading it here shortly. And um, I, I can't wait to look at it. It just it resonates with me, everything that you're saying. I just I, I wrote it. Uh, there's another book out there called Creating Radiant Health. It's the keys to unleashing uh, the healing powers within. I co-wrote that with, uh, it was one of my clients. She was diagnosed uh, with a form of cancer. And when she came uh, to see me, she had two months to live. Mm. Uh, she still got two months to live, but that was 15 years ago. Nice. So, <laughs> I love it. We wrote the handbook. Uh, and creating radiant health is a handbook of what to do. So it's got all kinds of stuff in there. So, and so, actually, so that's a pre, obviously that's the one you need first because no, that, that, no, I, no. you got to no? figure out how to love your body. I, I think the last book I wrote should have been the first book I wrote. <laughs> oh, I <laughs> gotcha. That doesn't matter. And if you go to the radiant health club, isn't that, the, isn't that the roadmap, the radiant health book? Uh, about radiant health isn't that kind of the roadmap on how to love your body though it's a workbook okay okay the, the other is it, the first book is to help you get rid of the devil and start listening to the angel okay gotcha that's a big book and that gets done there's a uh, another book that i've written and it's called what you what you what do you really think you know about staying healthy and I'm giving that one away on the uh, uh, website, I think, uh, at Radiant Health. Yeah. And uh, there's another book that I'm giving away. I give it to all my patients and I'm giving your people access to it. So if your people go to the book section, um, it'll come up and click on it and I'll give them a PDF of that thing and they can go. All of the other books have a... Uh, uh, a preview in them so you can see what's in them and decide whether uh, the nuts and bolts of this thing fit you or not. I, you know, they're all $9 books. Uh, so nice. the, if you want the, if you want the hard copy, you can order it. I think it's uh, $19, 18 97 or something, but it, it's a, a valuable, uh, it's valuable for everybody's library as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jeannie and I, is running. A, she's got a, a cancer ministry and she uses that book extensively in the people that she ministers to in uh, in her ministry. Is that the lady you co-wrote the book? With? Uh huh. Her uh, her website, if you want to read about her, is creating radiant health dot com. Oh, OK. She's got a wonderful story. Uh, Mark, if maybe just real quickly, Mark, if you could put that up also, if you get a chance, creating radiant health dot com um, and put her website up for those of the watching. I'm sure that we'd have some people that would be interested in that also. So. Um, well, OK, well, good. I mean, I'm, I'm just excited about those uh, books. I'm, I'm more excited about your philosophy. I mean, it, it's funny. On one hand, it's. I thought I understood what you're saying and, and no, it's just, you're, you're wrong. It's just, it's simple. Love your body. Go right to the, the easy <laughs> part first. It, yeah. and, and that, that's it in a nutshell. And it, and that's I mean, all that, that's, that's big. It's encompassing to say, love your body. I mean, that's not something yeah. you can just say without doing and get results. I mean, there's some big, big steps. Does love your body involve a 25 mile run. Yeah, Is well, that loving your body? That would kill my body. <laughs> uh, how does gorging yourself with condiments and and infections and MREs, is that loving your body? No. no. Uh, it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. If I said, okay, Mike, uh, to help you feel younger and more virile, uh, what I want you to do is get on your bicycle. Make sure you get one of them bikes that makes you scrooch down 
So yeah. we'll be sure to clear up your prostate. <laughs> and uh, what I want you to do is go for a, a five a five day ride in the Rocky Mountains, uh, <laughs> start in Denver and end up in uh, in in Durango. Be sure to hit all seven passes on the way up. Zach, loving your body. No, that's extreme stuff. How about get on a paddleboard out in the out in the bay and and paddle around with the sharks is that loving your body no it's extreme it's that looking and it's interesting that's all self-medication do you understand that 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 high that you get from those sorts of exhilarating things kicks off the same brain chemistry that heroin does so you're self-medicating the, the condiments and the confections and the mres they're programmed to kick off those same uh, self-medicating brain uh, chemicals. So basically, because you choose to live outside of mediocrity, you're self-medicating yourself with the very addictive things that's going to make you seek more and more and more of it and creating more disappointment, 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 and regrets, regrets, regrets. It's crazy. Love mediocrity. Love the bliss. It's awesome. And, and and you can do that by, like you said earlier, live in today, live in the moment. And, and love your body. And love your body. Yeah. So it, it it's real easy if you just put it in perspective like that. I love it. We've come full circle. I, I thought I thought we started out easy, but then I thought, well, maybe not so much. And now we're back to easy. It's uh, it, it really is. It really is. I would tell you the hard part is this little devil over here going, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. And and how do you decipher through that? Because there's a lot of misinformation combined with good information. There you go. <laughs> that's I, what, I love it. That's what this is all about. Both, yeah. Everything that I've got out there is designed to help you simplify the process of loving your body. Lifestyle mapping shows you it's 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 like going to a marriage counselor. You know, the counselor says, geez. You're not taking care of your spouse. You should do this. You should do that. Well, all those books say, here's a way to counsel with your body so that you can fall back in love. Think about little kids. You ever seen a little kid loving their body? Oh, yeah. I mean, I have we a got a granddaughter. Kid. Well, yeah. Well, gee, well, just just because I'm bald headed doesn't mean I have to be grown up does it right. <laughs> and exactly. especially since this guy is defining what grown up is exactly that makes great great sense awesome <laughs> well I've, we've got just a few minutes left at the top of the hour and we like to respect people's time and we like to end up so tell me give me a last parting shot if you will uh dr frank and, and what we can do what we should do um as far as making sure that we our lifestyle, our health, what is it? Our health and our, our life. Health span and lifespan. Health span and lifespan meet and converge at the same point or very close. What do we need to do? Love your body. All right. I yeah, mean, that's, it, too, that's too easy. Well, there's three components. We started with this. So there's three components. It's biomass, it's uh, emotional, and it's physical. And in those three bands, what you want to be able to do is to put those three vents in the 24-hour period that represents us. And that then breaks down into three components, too. It's work, it's family, and it's self. And, and if you look, if you know anything about vents, they're all circles. And so if you've got it balanced, you got an equal balance here, equal balance here, equal balance here. And they'll come together in a funny little triangle right there in the middle. That's bliss. That's love in your body. Now, if you're suffering from a chronic disease, it's pretty risky to miss some of those some of those um, metrics. If you're not, it's simple to every now and then have an excess. It isn't going to hurt. But it's what's the killer? It, and here's here's the summary that you're looking for. It's what you will do every day helps you. What you do occasionally won't hurt you. Perfect. 
it makes it even easier. Is that Again. is that a exclamation point or is that a period? <laughs> I think it's uh, exclamation point. I like it. I, I yes. think it's you know let's uh, let's um, lift that up if you will because uh, you know those are some of the things that we need to be striving for and I think all of us get so wrapped up. You mentioned family, work, um, and even ourselves. It, it, sometimes we forget what's really important, and that's, that's we gotta, yeah. That's if we don't if we don't love our body, none of that matters. Because we aren't going to have the family. That paper, How Life Gets in the Way of Living, is uh, the most popular uh, post on the RadiantHealthClub.com. So click on uh, click on the uh, health blog, and it's in the upper, uh, upper right-hand corner. Click on it and get yourself a copy of that. Because Definitely. the truth of the matter is you, you want to do lifestyle mapping. It tells you exactly where you need to adjust things so that you bring those vans closer to bliss. <laughs> awesome. Dr. Frank, with that, I'm going to um, turn off our recording here in a second, but I just really want to thank you again for coming on and sharing your insight, sharing your wonderful knowledge base. And, uh, you know, it, I thought we were going a different direction and it came back so simple to me. And I just really love the fact that there's one thing we got to do to stay healthy, and that's love our body. I absolutely love that. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that from you probably, and I'm gonna use that as uh, to to tell people that that's really what we're trying to do here. If we love our body, we can help our body heal itself. And uh, I, I believe it firmly. I've seen it. Um, I've just never heard it put in that simple of terms. So again, thank you for being here. Um, thank you for those of, that are watching this and be watching it on replay. Um, if you have any questions at all about what we're doing, go to our website, alternativehealthconcepts.com, uh, and get on our blog list and get our great blogs. We send out three a week, some really power-packed information about how to keep yourself healthy, about how to love your body, and, um, and also learn about our supplement that we have, BioPro Plus, and, and how that could benefit you or a loved one. So with that said... Wish you all good health and love your body. <laughs>